Good morning everybody. Uh, well, it's morning for me, I keep saying that, don't I? Right, today I thought we would do a bit of a back to basics with Makume Gane. Uh, we've had a bit of a discussion in group, uh, people saying that their patterns are too busy, or the colours aren't right, or, you know, a myriad of things that they're not happy with. So what I'm going to do is use the same colours for two blocks. I'm going to do one thicker with less imprints and I'm going to do one uh, with thinner layers with more imprints. And um, so it's the two extremes and then you, we can talk about it and um, you can see the difference uh, side by side of what will happen just by using thinner pieces of clay or by using less or more impressions. Uh, of course I'm doing it my way guys. Um, I'm not going to be slicing off thin slithers with my blade as other people do. Um, you know it's up to you how you carve into that. Um, you know some people are more good at it than others. Um, so yeah, um, let's get started. I'm just going to use some very basic colours. Uh, I think the first mistake, I'm not, well, I'm not going to say mistake uh, because, you know, nothing's a mistake. Um, people are using maybe too strong colours um, or not having enough contrast between the colours. Um, and I don't want to go too much into colour theory and stuff guys, but it's something, you know, that um, is quite basic. Um, is just understanding different tones and values of colours. Um, so I'm going to use black because that is the darkest colour. So that's from one extreme, you know, white and black are the extremes of light and dark. And to make a good Makume Gane, you need to have a good balance with your colours. So colours that are totally uh, opposite on the colour wheel um, work really well together. In fact, just let me grab my little, I've got a colour wheel, I'm just going to grab it. Um, you know, these are really, really useful guys, um, you know, just to see how colours um, go together and the such. But when I'm talking about um, complementary colours, I'll say, let me just line this up. A complementary colour is the exact opposite on the colour wheel. So green and red are complementary. Blue and orange are complementary. Yellow and purple are complementary. And then you can get your split complementaries. So you could have green, reddy orange, and a pale purple. In fact, let's line it up so there's not a colour in between. So there we go, right? We've got a, a yellow green or a pale green with red and with purple. And they're all com complementary, but each main colour on the colour wheel, um, they're all the same. Um, strength of colour. Does that make sense? So if you are going to use, say, uh, let's go back to um, just a normal complementary, that green and that red um, work really well together. But if you want another colour to match in with them, just come down the shade a touch. So maybe use a pink or maybe use um, a pale green. Um, in there, uh, you know, if you want to do some really funky colours, uh, but getting yourself a little colour wheel is really good. Um, you know, these are these are just a couple of quid, and it you know it shows you the different values of colours and things. It's a really good idea to uh, help you understand a bit of colour theory. Um, anyway, enough about that. I'm just going to use black, white and green and what I'm going to do is uh, black is just going to be my backing and my top layer and I'm, what I'm going to do is use white, green and I'm going to make some pale green by mixing two so that I know all the colours will work together. 
um, so I'll go and condition some clay uh, I'm just going to do um, a bit of white a bit of green and then I'll mix green and white uh, to get a, a middle value and uh, I'll condition some black for my backing and um, some for my top layer uh, so I'll go and get those done guys and I'll be back in a sec hi guys okay I've uh, already cut them out so I've just got four oh four squares of the dark green four squares of the pale green four squares of white and two squares of black and all we're going to do is we're not going to mess with any foil or anything we're just going to keep it simple I'm just going to layer up uh, two let me bring these in a bit two blocks dark green white light green what oh i'm gonna need more white aren't i i didn't think about that uh what forgot there dark green white dirt, dirt, dirt. dark green again uh, apologies guys i need to i've got some more white here might just be enough for what we need two more squares I can patch these up a little bit there we go and a white Uh, and I still need some more white bear with I'll just go and do a bit more white sorry about that guys right I just need two more squares of white to top this off and I'm doing a patch it job again with this one there that'll do so there we go so I've got my two blocks uh, just give them both a little roll yes yeah, so all I've done is layer up each color and put a lot of white in between again you don't have to I just wanted to make sure I had a good contrast for you guys okay I think that will be okay now right so with one block I'm just going to leave it as it is with those layers they're on a two on the pasta machine I'm just going to leave them as is uh, oh I should have put my black on shouldn't I uh, I'll just give this a little roll and a stretch guys and it'll fit And I'm just going to put a piece of black on the top uh, to push through the clay when I make my pattern and that'll do that'll be fine so that's our thick block with just black on the top and with this one let's get it back oh no I'm going to roll this out um, to double the length and stack it I'm just making sure that my bottom layers are caught up with the top layers reasonably right and what I'm going to do with this is now stack it so that those layers have become a lot thinner and that's the reason I wanted to make sure I had white on the top so that I haven't got the colours next to each other so there we go we've got one with thinner layers uh, a bit hard to see on this one one with thicker layers and I'll just get this into some semblance of order I 
and put my black on top. Let's give it a little stretch, make sure it fits. Give it a roll. There we go. So now we've got two blocks, one with reasonably thin pieces and one with thicker pieces. And then we're just going to go and put some pattern into this. Uh, and I'm just going to use uh, my ruler again and um, just put some marks in. So on this one that's got the thinner layers, I'm going to make the pattern busier. Uh, in fact, I might just, uh, shall I use a circle cutter? I'll just get my circle cutter and I'm using it. Oh, that's a bit big. I won't use my circle cutter. Um, I'm just going to put some lines in. Let's move this one out the way. Just going to put some lines and marks in using my ruler. Let's make it funky. We'll push that back together. I'm just going to turn it and put some more in the other way. like so and then you can see I've made that one quite a busy one I could have pushed a stamp in or something um, let's just give this a roll just to get them something like and then I'm just going to use a, uh, a porky tool and put some holes in random holes in into the center of these squares that I've made And that'll do I think so I'll just get this back together give that a roll just gonna give the bottom a roll guys and it catches up Okay, so that's thinner layers with a busier pattern. And this one, let me just bring it up a bit. This one is the thicker layers and I'm not going to put as busy a pattern in this one. Um, I think I'll just do some hatches and things through it like this oh get back together so I've just put some lines down through that I'll just get it back together a bit and then I'm just again I'm gonna put a few random holes in this three there three there and I'll put one there and one there so that's not as busy a pattern as our other one <clears throat> I've got a croaky throat again today it's not that yapping I've been doing let's give the bottom a roll give it a oh give it a squish to get them holes to close up there we go that'll do okay guys so I'm just gonna let these rest a minute because they're getting a bit sticky it is warm in here today um, I'll have a little clean up and then we'll come back and do some slices and make a pendant out of each one uh, so I'll see you in a minute when these have rested 
Hi guys, okay, so this has rested a little now. Uh, it still feels a bit sticky, but that could be my hands, I suppose. Um, so I'm just going to um, chop a slither off each of these. Uh, I'll do the thicker one first. And that has, hasn't even got any dark green in it. Um, so let me just take another slither. There we go. We've got a mix in this one. So you can see um, with a looser pattern and th thinner, uh, thicker um, pieces, you get um, quite an open look Makume Gane. And I'll just give this one the same treatment. I'll just take a slice off the front first and a slice through. And you can see with this one, I've got quite a bit of black in as well. Um, I'll keep that that way. Can you see? Yeah. So with a closer pattern and thinner slices, if I just bring these two up, ignore, I'll ignore the black in that one. Let's find two pieces that have got a bit of each colour in. So can you see, just by using thinner slices and using a denser pattern, the difference in the look of your Makume Gane. Now this works really well for when you've got good contrasting colours. But this style works really well if you've got some, um, a lot of translucency in it or maybe some foiling in it because then um, you get to see that foiling, don't you? Uh, so I hope this is making sense to you all. Um, so should we just make a couple of pendants? Um, quite like that one really. So I'm just going to pop that block to one side. Oh, and with this as well, guys, I could go over this again and put some more in with some black if I so wished. Um, but I think I'll use this piece and I think I might just try another slice off this piece and see what we get. If I can... And you see the further I've gone down the less the patterns pronounced right I think I'll, st I'll stick to this piece uh, so we've got two pieces here uh, I love the black in that I think I'll stick with the black what I'm just going to do is pass these through my pasta machine um, just on a two I've got some clay to one side here for my back in uh, that's on a number two as well. I'll just pass these through on a number two and then we can uh, back them up and make something with them. So I'll just go and do that and we'll be a sec. Okay guys, they've gone through on a two. Uh, as usual, I'm just going to burnish all my pieces um, just to make sure they're lovely and smooth. Uh, I did think about putting a border around one of these but I think I'll just mount them on some black. Uh, so... Uh, let's have a look. This is the cutter I'm going to use. It's a new one I've got from um, K and K. Uh, let's have a see. Quite like this bit here. So I'm just going to trim some of this off, um, just so I'm not wasting any really, guys. Uh, that's that bit. Let's put you to one side. And I'll use the same cutter on this one and that one will do. I'll just give this a bit of a burnish then I know my back and my front are nice and neat. And if people have asked me, I've said this a few times, this is just a scraper that I got with um, a Sculpey clay kit. You could do this with um, a plastic credit card or a store card. Just something that's very smooth. Um, let's 
just look at a few lines on that. I'll just go this way. There we go. And I'll just pick this up. Oh. Because that's going to be my back. So I'll just make sure that this is nice and smooth. There we go. And then I'll just pick these pieces up and pop them on ready for burnishing. Move that one down a little bit. There we go. I don't know why I lifted that off then. Give this a bit of burnish. we go and then let's cut this one out I just give it a little wiggle then I know it won't pop out with it and this one let's try and catch some turquoise uh, not turquoise, light green in it. There we go. Get rid of the excess. Get myself a bit of copy paper. bit of something there just let me smooth it with my nail there we go and I'll just give these another little burnish just to make sure that they're nice and flat on the paper and there we go two nice pendants I shall pop these in the oven uh, and I'll see you in the baked guys see you in a minute hi guys right we're out of the oven I've give them uh, two of them I made this one with the bit of scrap that was left over guys I've just uh, put a hole in it um i've given them a quick buff uh just for the sake of doing it i haven't really sanded the surface or anything that's just buffing it uh, and i made a little bead as well to go with this one and that's the other one again i haven't done anything with it because the pattern to be fair isn't that brilliant is it um right so i've just got a bit of black cord I'm just going to do my usual uh, trick with this, if I can get it to go through, that is. This hole's not going to be big enough, is it? Uh, I'll just put one end through. You'll get the gist. Yeah, I was going to uh, loop it, but I'll just do this and then you get the gist. Um to what it would look like if I'd put the hole big enough in. So I just did that with a little bead that would have sat over the knot to hide it. And then with this one, um, I've just got a little pinch bail. Now I don't know whether to do it on a point or do it so it's uh, in the middle. I could do it on a point. Uh, maybe this one. Is that central? I think it is. And I think that this drill bit is 
just the perfect size for that um, pinch bail. stretched yep so that one's just on a simple pinch bail guys so we've got one there with a little bail on one there that I made from the scraps it's now got bits of dust all over it uh, let's just put a knot in this then it sits right bead back on there we go so we've got a, a really simple corded pendant with a bead on and just I haven't done anything with that one and just a simple one with uh, a simple pinch bail on so there you go guys just um, a little look into the different things you will get uh, by using thicker layers and um, a busier pattern with your Makume Gane. Of course, this was the thicker layers with not such a busy pattern in. And this was the thinner layers with um, a busier pattern in. And you can see that, you know, the effects are totally different. And so that's just something to think about really while you're doing your Makume Gane. You know what sort of effect do you want to get out of it uh, like i say i like doing this style if i put a lot of translucent and um foil in because you get to see more of it don't you uh, whereas doing it a bit busier shows off the colors more uh, within the uh pendant right guys i'll leave it there i hope that was useful for you um you know, I love doing Makumagani anyway, but as I said, we've been having a discussion in group about um, different techniques and different ways of layering and thicknesses and things. So I hope that's just, um, you know, made you think about that. And I shall see you all in the next video. Bye, guys.